don't normally do the intro in front of the guests, Being do we? professional, just... Alright. <coughs> Shall we start again? Remember, remember your book title? The Dip Guy. The Dip Guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's Dick. The Dip Guy. That's... Fuck <laughs> it, <laughs> This is getting worse this and worse. It's terrible, Sam. It well, is. Can you do a proper professional introduction, please? Ready? Hey, Sam. Hi, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so today we've got Zoe coming on, haven't we? Yes, we have. Why is Zoe coming on? Well, we we got asked to do an episode on grief, didn't we? And we we done we done our versions of grief. Yeah. And um, when we got asked to do that episode, I asked Zoe to come on because she lost both parents young, and I thought who better to talk about grief than someone that's been riddled with it? Mm. It's a good conversation yeah. um, to have. Um, that was a topic meeting. I've had loads of other requests as well from yeah. people since that. So. Okay, so we've got a few more to get through. Yeah, we have. There's a couple of of, of ones people requested that it's going to be quite difficult to talk about, to be fair. But that is why, really? um, yeah. Yeah, that's why, that's why we started the, the podcast up, isn't it? To talk yeah. about the things that are uncomfortable to talk about. Yeah. So, what have you been up to recently, anyway? You've been training hard? I have finally sent the coat back to Scotland. Finally sent the coat back, coat police. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You've been, you've been, been using me, mum and dad's gym. We get some steps in as well. Yeah, loads. Yeah. yeah, is that where your knee clicked like an old man a minute ago? My knee is made of cheese. This right one, <laughs> it needs an operation. Need I could cheese. be just stood there talking to you, and I would just fall over. It's not as bad as it used to be since I've done hip workouts and stuff. I think I've strengthened it, but it is really messed up. If I play football and turn suddenly, it. it pops and it swells up for about three days but I'm alright if I'm running like in a straight line straight line up the mountain yeah I'll be fine yeah coming down it might pop out but yeah. your mate's quite big he'll carry me who's your mate <laughs> you <laughs> what date are we going up again 20, is it the 27th no that's when we're coming back isn't it I don't know mate you're the fucking brains behind the operation you need to refresh me on the dates at some point yeah well I rob Kersey like, I get the time out. off time off's not a problem I just yeah. need to make sure because I'm well I think we're back on the 27th uh, Rob Kersey texted me this morning and yeah. asked and I um, I sent him to him so I'll just copy and paste the message to you okay. after right. super duper what have you been up to? Um. well actually mate I've got some really big and exciting news mm -hmm. <laughs> you're news, pregnant the new <laughs> <laughs> no, that the news that I told you the other day, the really exciting news that comes. Well, it was David Goggins. Well, yeah, there's that. Yeah. I'm going to be meeting him. But yeah. the even bigger and more exciting news is that I've managed to get into the London Marathon again. Oh, of course. Sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> back to back years, so I'm running it again. Yeah. Um, October 2nd, so I've got a little bit of training <sighs> to do. What? I'm busy. I would have run it with you. <laughs> Me knee. <laughs> no, this it's not about me. Go on. <laughs> well, so, no. so yeah, so no, I was very lucky. Um, so obviously I started. We haven't spoken about twenty. My twenty. What day is that on? It's a Sunday. Um, but we haven't spoken about my year where I all started with my fundraising and whatnot. Mm. But um, off the back of that, I ended up with a place in London, and then I reapplied to go again this year, but didn't get in the initial kind of. Um, application process mm. but because the British Heart Foundation is the actual official sponsor of the London Marathon this year um, they've been granted some more spaces for their team mm. um, so an email went out the other day I got hold of it put an application in and I've got a spot that's amazing mate I mean again back to back years um, just means I'm going to have to start getting some marks in and if you need any advice I'm here for you <laughs> just fitness wise okay. oh, yeah. Yeah, right, I'll climb mountains mate I'll one. conquer them you've done one well, we've all got to start you, somewhere you moaned all the way up that one <laughs> the, <laughs> all right. <laughs> right you've got the halfway and you've nearly quit we, we've got some news on we'll, we'll skip we'll edit that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the dip as well we're going to be um, changing it up instead of doing Anxiety UK it feels right um, a friend of mine said he was going to take on the challenge and he sent me a link why the Peter Whale Foundation 
Um, I've contacted the family and um, he lost his fights with addiction and mental health. So I want to do the December dips in honour of him and his family. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put a post up about it and that. But, yeah, um, do it around this episode if you want. Yeah. launch it all at the same time. Yeah. Definitely, a good idea. yeah, and I think that'd be nice for his family, yeah. and also for 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 him. Um, yeah, it's not with us anymore, but he can still he can still help others from yeah. from his story. So I think that'd be nice. That would be nice. So, okay, um, you're you're doing the challenge, aren't you? I are certainly you, will be. Are you yeah. going to do the sea every day? Um, I, that'd be difficult around work. But so if you don't do the sea, you're going to do a cold shower. Oh yeah, hundred percent. There's people doing it all over the place now. Did you hear me whistle then? Because I've got no tooth. And why have you got no tooth, Sam? Because I'm a hillbilly. No, generally, why have you got no tooth? Because I need a crown, which right. is about fucking time, isn't it? Yeah. No, g- generally, I mean, after the challenge that you've done, you kind of earned the crown, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. I should have had a crown a long time ago. Yeah. I think. No, anyway. But no, this is a tooth crown. Tooth crown, yeah. Yeah, because someone chipped my tooth. Yeah. Um, years ago. Wasn't Zoe, was it? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to name and show. They've been doing the dip lately. <laughs> I haven't right. seen them for a long time. They oh. started the dip. Yeah, but they were talking to me the other day, and I was thinking, you chipped my tooth. <laughs> <laughs> but it was an accident, and it was years ago. Okay. It was involved with a pint glass. And How long have you got to go around looking like someone? Another lives? seven days, and I've been like it for seven days already. But yeah, I. I, do you know what? And this is a very good point. I'm glad you brought it up because I was so worried for so long about losing this tooth, which is why I'm actually getting the crown done. And now I've lost it, I've just completely embraced it and thought, do you know what? It's a tooth. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's made me a little bit insecure, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, like there, there'd have been a time I wouldn't have even gone out of the house because I'd be because of my ego, and and it just like shows how much how different I am now like, and and that's another good point to make all that worry about my tooth and losing it was built up in my head and it's never as bad as what it, it's never as bad as what we make it out to be in our head do you know what I mean no, I, I sometimes I have to put my hand up sometimes when I'm smiling because <laughs> I feel a little bit insecure the first day I had it I went into work and people were talking to me and I just went look at my tooth because I was, I was like really <laughs> really um, what's the word conscious about it Self-conscious. That's a big word. Self-conscious. Self-conscious about it, yeah. yeah. But it is what it is at the end of the day. There's no point worrying about it. It's going to get fixed and and I'm, I'll be back to my ruggedly handsome self. Anyway, enough about your tooth, sir. <laughs> More importantly, uh, we've got Zoe on today. Um, she's been very kind enough to come and share her story. I'm glad she, um, glad she's she very is. open, very honest. Um, she was very nervous about coming on, but she, she actually. I've been trying to get on for a while. She was a bit of I'm glad she did because this first series I've said from the start, I want to get people that mean a lot to me on the show, and that's yeah. what that's the been the theme. Um, and she was a great, really good interview. Um, so please enjoy the episode, like and subscribe, YouTube and Spotify, dare to talk. Um, we've got the Dead Dip Facebook group. Please join that or ask to join that, and you can get all the info on Dead Dip December. Yeah. Um, follow me on Instagram, Jackie Boy Shep. Follow Sam on Instagram, Dare underscore two underscore dip. <laughs> uh, or not, you like don't to, have to. <laughs> like, subscribe, and share on all platforms, and enjoy the episode. I'm Sam. I'm Jack. This is Dead Talk, and today we've got Zoe Dawson. Oh God! Hi Zoe. <laughs> Hi. Are you okay? No. You're petrified, aren't yeah. you? Why? Can you just tell us why you don't like talking about yourself? Because I don't find myself overly that interesting, <laughs> if I'm honest. And okay. I said I don't want people to think, ugh. You mm. worry too much. Yeah. You've got a very interesting story. Well, it's not interesting, but. It's very sad. Yeah. So what? why? You said a minute ago, just before we hit the red button, that you um, you feel like you sometimes come across as a bit of a see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Why do you feel like that? Where does that come from? It's, like I said, it's easier for people to see you as a hard-faced person than, I don't know, like I don't want people to feel sorry for me ever. Do you put on a front? I don't even know if it's front anymore. I think that is just me. Did it start off being a front then? Yeah. Why? Because you have to be strong in certain situations. Well, what's your story then? What, what, why have you put oh on the front? 
been through a little bit. Yeah, what have you been I through? Don't know. So, are you local? Were you born and raised here? Born and raised in Felixstowe. Yep. Had lovely parents. My dad has always been an alcoholic, but that never affected my childhood at all. My mum was very good at keeping that separate. So, yeah, everything, growing up, perfect. Obviously got to about 15, 16. Thought my dad was a bit of a lad, to be fair. Like, because he wanted to have fun with all my friends, we were allowed to drink, have a lovely time. And then I had my son quite young, so I was 19, but like had their full support. Like literally, you can't write it, it was textbook. It was lovely, lovely childhood, lovely upbringing. Fully supported when I had Callum. But then, I think, I don't know how old he, he was five years old and my mum died and my dad died and my grandparents died, like everyone died in the same year. Mm. How and old was, was you then? I was 25. And Callum was five. Yeah. Yeah. Same so then you were sort of left, just you and your sister with mm-hmm. your little boy. So mm-hmm. you have a, you got a sister? Oh yeah. Older or younger? Older sister, but You're I'm very in close. Yeah. 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 You're in charge. <laughs> I'm always in charge. Does so yeah. she know that? <laughs> yeah, she, she'll know that, but she'll be like, mm, you, Your dad died from alcoholism, mm-hmm. didn't he? Yeah. And your mum, cancer? Yeah, so my mum was diagnosed with terminal cancer and she was separated from my dad then, but not long, like they hadn't been separated long. But when she was like, oh, I don't want your dad to know because she just couldn't be dealing with what would come from it. And then, I'm trying to think now. Yeah, then he found out from someone random because it's Felix Day. Mm. He's like, oh, you know, sorry to hear about. And he's like, and he come to me and he actually said, I'll die before your mum does. And he did. Mm. What age was you when you knew that your dad had a problem with drink? Probably about 16, 17. What, well, you started to realise it? Did you ever think, oh, Well, he'd done problem. a lot of drugs as well. So it was yeah. kind of, when you were younger, you kind of assume that's normal. Yeah. Like him and his mate smoking weed in the garden, that sort of thing. Like that was completely normal. Mm. And... I didn't necessarily see it as a problem. But like alcoholism runs in his side of the family. So his brother had had a liver transplant and got given a second chance. He always said, I ain't got a problem. It's all you people that have got a problem. And he would never, even when he was in hospital dying, he would still be like, I'm all right. Mm. So like, Complete denial about but it. he, I think a lot of undiagnosed mental health issues, one hundred percent. But even ten years ago, if he went to the doctors and was like, oh, "I'm doing this," they'd be like, "Oh, you're all right, mate." Mm. And they did. They were like, "Oh, you're all right." It's these women, like they'd actually joke with him. So, yeah. so, what was your dad's story then? See, I'm not overly aware. He was the youngest brother of five. Okay, first big, three big brothers, family. yeah. Family. First three brothers were in the army. He was born on an army base, but he was too young. Him and his second brother, they were too young to join the army. So like, they never got into that. And then their parents passed away. I, I'd never met them, so I didn't know the grandparents. So I think he was a bit of a, he's always been a bit of a delight, shall we say. He'd always just do what he wants, do what he wants every time and everyone else was wrong, so. Okay. He was a fighter, he was a drinker, he was a mod back in the day and would... What yeah. was your relationship with him like? Fantastic. Yeah, did you always get on? Oh no, we'd, we'd argue. I was born on his birthday. <laughs> so he said I ruined his birthday on the day I was born because he could no longer celebrate. But, um, <laughs> Stole his thunder. I did. Yeah. So we're both, we're both very, very similar and everyone was like, oh my God, she's well like her dad. And I think I said it to you yesterday, and I'm like, oh, everyone thinks he's a bit of a twat, so mm. that's not much of a compliment in a way. Mm. But I think, I don't know, like, because my mum is the, was the loveliest woman in the world, like, everyone adored her. Mm. And then my dad, so it's like this Jekyll and Hyde thing yeah. with both of them. How did they make? I don't, I don't even know. So these, I, I'd never... How really old was your mum when she, when she passed? She was 55. And how old was your dad? 60. It's young, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, but my dad had previously tried to kill himself twice. What, years? No, but pro- probably three years prior to when he died, he'd really tried. Mm. Like, he'd left notes, he'd he'd done the full, he'd taken an overdose and he was this, in... 
Oh, so you guys were still at the house? Is it all My sister was still at the house. I moved out when I was quite young, so I think I didn't get as much of abuse as my sister did, as in, like, mental abuse, because when he was drunk, he was an arsehole. Mm. So, but when he tried to kill himself the first time, it was my sister that found him. So, not very nice, but I think he wanted my mum to find him, because he was very dark like that. Mm. So... And when he came out for coma, and there's me like, oh, you know, and he actually was like, oh, you're a cunt. Because he did not want to be alive. He really didn't. So that was quite... How did that affect you? I don't know. Like, I'm really numb. I still, still numb. You don't really overthink about I'll it. I joke around with you all the time saying you're, you're heartless, and that's why I said um, you, you put on a front, because... Mm. I know it is sometimes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, hundred no, it is a front. It has to be a front. Yeah. But um Have you dealt with both your parents' death? No, you never deal with it. No. What do you do? Do you just cope day to day? Every day is different and people always go, Oh, with time it gets easier, doesn't. Mm. And I heard a little saying and it was like if people that say things get easier with time never lost someone important. Mm. And it's so true because I don't know, like how do you deal with it then? I don't. Do, do you talk to your sister? Do you ever have a conversation about it? No. Do you think that might help? I don't know. Like I don't know. It's really, really odd. We have the odd conversation, like on Father's Day, when we went to the grave together. Like you have like little conversations, but I don't. I don't know. How do them little conversations make you feel? We're well, usually joking, which is really bad. But like we're at the grave, and I'm like if he was alive now and saw me sat here or even tried to put a flower give him a flower he'd be like fuck off yeah do you know what I mean so <laughs> yeah but that's the way people cope with it yeah so we, well, it, this yeah. is how I cope with everything but when you have these little conversations do you come away from it feeling a bit better no yeah. no <laughs> well, I was gonna say. no but this, this is me being 100% truthful yeah. I don't know there is nothing that can make you feel better no they tried bloody therapy on me and she even gave up because what she was of, like what sort of therapy was like, that I've done like the CBT therapy I've done talk therapy I had someone who then decided I wasn't good in a group so they put me one on one what, what did you have this therapy where did that come from um I don't even know how it started, but because I suffered, I was really, that's what it was. After a few years of everything that went on, and I'd completely blocked it all out, so like I literally was like, get on with life. I had a five year old child. Okay, so you, you need to just carry on. Do you, do you think because you had your, your son, that oh, was yeah. like. Oh, like, yeah. Have to. I haven't got the chance to properly grieve here. I just have to be strong yeah. for my child. Yeah, strong for everybody. Yeah. Strong for everybody. But, but yourself. Um, <laughs> Well, no, because it is a way of being strong for yourself too. Because mm. I had to. Who else is going to pick me up? Did you fall into depression when you went? Uh, no. After you'd never. never I, I don't think I even really cried. For no, years. I've never seen you. I've never seen you. Even you have. Get... You have once because you're an asshole and you were really drunk, but you won't remember that. So. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Oh thanks. So, just just putting you on the spot yeah. now. But no, like not many people will. But um. Our mind came out as like OCD. My house had to be spotless and I would literally be scrubbing it 24 seven. No one was allowed around. And it got to the point where like a few of my friends were like, you need help. Mm. So I went to the doctors and the first thing they do obviously is put you on sertraline, which made me feel absolutely horrendous. So yeah. they just kept on up and up and up yeah. in. I, just, I was just gonna say it was really good that your friends picked up on that. Mm. Yeah. You obviously noticed a change yeah. or something in you that wasn't a little bit a little bit off. Yeah, no, I've um, got really close friends. For so them to identify lucky. that and to mm. give you the advice and for you to even take well, take that on of, board and Yeah. You kind of know yourself, don't you, or you've got a bit of an issue but you just carry on. Yeah. So um yeah, I was on sertraline and they were like, Oh, that's when the counselling came up, you need this. Okay. And she, this woman used to come to my house and, oh my God, she'd put like different stones on the table. Yep. And she'd be like, if you look at the stones, which one would you pick? And I'm like, that one? And she was like, why? And I'm like, and this is how it went. And they just constantly want people to go, I'm like this because of my childhood. But because I said I've got a perfect childhood, there's literally nothing I could think of and go, oh, that was horrendous. Mm. But... Did, it, did you not have any concerns on that when your dad was drunk and... And stuff when you were younger then they did not cause any sort of 
No, like not for me. Yeah. Like I think it's because it was so normal that I never thought, well, oh, that's bad. I don't know. Like there were some things. Like he was a bit rough at times, shall we say? And like how he'd like if he was pissed off with you, like the way he went about some things. Mm. He was back now. I'm thinking shit. Like that's not normal. But at the time, never thought anything of it. Mm. Literally just had had a nice time. Went on holidays, you know, you just done everything that everyone else done, so no difference. Mm. But then, yeah, let's see. It's what it is now. <laughs> so, you, <laughs> so you went through this therapy, um, obviously you said initially you didn't particularly respond. To all that I didn't respond at all to it. So obviously you said you went through several different things that yeah. you tried. That but you, again, you're nothing. quite stubborn. Do you think you went into that therapy with, mm. with thinking this isn't going to work? Well, I went into that therapy and I remember the lady saying, like, she was saying all this stuff to me and I was like, the only thing that's wrong is that my parents are dead. Can you bring them back? No. So what are you going to do about it? Like, what can you, what can you physically do? And this is why... But I mean, it's I not about... Uh, do you know what I mean? If you're going yeah. in with such high expectations of thinking, I want my parents back... Oh, I know. I obviously didn't think that. I'm just yeah. saying that's the only situation that would make my situation better. Mm. And that's not going to change. It's not something that happened to me that I could talk through and possibly get over no but I think therapy the idea is to cope with your new reality isn't it yeah probably mm. but obviously and if you're going into it with an open mind of thinking this isn't going to work for me what has worked for you because you've done the cold water therapy did you get benefits from that the cold water therapy for me was it got me up and out the house and got me into a routine mm. and because you were in the water in the depths of winter as well I was you? I was very <laughs> I was very good yeah. and blue. <laughs> yeah, like a smurf. But, but like... <laughs> we'll edit that bit out. That was... No, no. I'm joking. Yeah, no, cold water therapy for me done really well and it got me talking with other people and I think realising, talking to other people about their situations and then they'd be like, oh, you know, what's wrong? And I'd say about mine and everyone's like, oh my God. And I don't necessarily think my situation's any worse than others sometimes. Mm. Everyone's got so, a story. Yeah, and yeah. I, I've always said, like, everyone's grief is personal to them. It is. Mm. Yeah. But at the same time, this is what I mean about me coming across as a bit of an arsehole. If someone rang me and they were like, oh, my nan died, I'm like, mm hmm. Because you're used to it. You're used. To, like, yeah, I've, met, I've had this conversation yeah, with you loads of yeah. times, haven't I? So. I don't know, this is, I don't know. But do you think that might be because of your job as well? Because oh, yeah. the same, I've said the same with me, yeah. my job, yeah. my work is a lot of things. I thought that when, when, when I was going to get Zoe on, because you're both hard into situations, like you both like spoke to, to certain situations with me and I thought, how have you said that so relaxed? Yeah, but I, mean, it's like I, I explained to you before we started the podcast, I explained yeah. to you about a horrific thing yeah, that yeah, happened, yeah. happened with yeah. me yesterday. Well, a few. Yeah, yeah, just just awful, yeah. and um, in the moment they happened, I only realised later on just how like numb I yeah. was to it. Yeah. Like I yeah, didn't yeah. even bat an eyelid. I yeah, yeah. I was so calm and cool about it. Yeah, um, yeah. There's been a couple of situations like that from both of you actually, where you're <laughs> explaining something to me, and I thought, Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a, why are you saying it's that so? is a massive thing though. Like you do become numb. To yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But I also think it makes me fantastic at my job because when I do end of life care and I'm with the families, yeah. mm. I'm so good with the families. Well, you probably know what they're just about to embrace yeah. on, so you've got an yeah, understanding of it. Yeah, I feel like awful for them yeah. about what they're about to go through, and yeah. I can kind of explain it. Yeah, mm. but I think I think with me, similarly, so. I get that hardened side of things and I get um, having to have that professional side but I always I try to recognise outside of that I try and detach myself I'm consciously trying to detach myself and make sure that I'm having good relationships mm. and laughing and enjoying life and being emotional and expressing myself and these sort of things but I think you mm. get that you have to balance it out because if you get too heavy on that side of things, yeah, you end up becoming that cold heartless. Mm. No, I'm not gonna lie, like, bitch like her. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that, but that's that's not yeah. a, that's you not have... a negative reflection on you. No. That's just that's that's the but job the you're in. But the amount of times though, after I've been in that sort of situation, 
you won't meet anyone that works in the hospital that hasn't gone in the sleeves room or linen cupboard to cry after it and then yeah. you have to pull yourself together because the next minute someone's going oh I want my pillow plumped do you know what I mean and you literally have to go from yeah. that to that mm. and carry yeah. on yeah. so it is yeah work is a massive I thing. always say to you it's a front and I, and I know it is because not, because when when I was at my lowest the, the, on my last relapse, you were a massive help for me. And I don't oh, like, am I getting some recognition? Yes, you are. Yeah, <laughs> you was, and you give me some great advice, and you helped me out loads, and you got me out of a dark spot with yeah. you and a number of people. And I saw the genuine side to you where you weren't putting on this front. So it isn't. Yeah, yeah no, but like that heart is in no, there. No, I do. Part. I have. I give a shit massively, and I often yeah. give a shit too much. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do the job that you do. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and I would really like, I'll always make sure people I care about yeah. are okay. Yeah. But then it's just towards myself, that's when I'm not. Okay, and I think, you're, you're, and I think, yeah. I think you've inherited your dad's dark this sense of humour. Yeah, no, <laughs> I have, and I am very much like him. But I'm also, I get the, I don't know, my mum was like really calm and really like, so I do have that sometimes because I can be level headed. Mm. Yeah. Do you, oh. I think it sounds like you've been left very confused by the whole thing, which is understandable. You to, it's enough for anyone to yeah. lose one parent, but to lose both of them and then have a five-year-old and 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 on your own. Yeah, within as well. three months of each other. Yeah, it's a lot for anyone to. Yeah. If anything, it's quite. You've done quite well. To be fair. <laughs> yeah, I think no. It's like you have no choice. Mm. You literally have no choice, especially when there's a child involved. How different? Do you think it would have been for you if you didn't have Callum? Would you have gone off the rails? Oh, 100%. Mm. I kind of did Why? go off the rails a little bit. Why would you have gone off the rails? Because I wouldn't have had him to concentrate on. Like like I said, I will do anything for anyone else. But when it comes to me, I'm not a good... Like, I don't know. When we were in the sea yesterday and there were the lads making weed, I was like, oh, that smells nice. And you're like, no, it smells disgusting. I was like, yeah, it smells disgusting. <laughs> yeah. It reminded me of my childhood. Yeah, so like, that, yeah. Was, yeah, so like... But I would always, I have a very addictive personality. I'm very, like, if I think of something, I'm like, oh, I have to have it. Mm. But you haven't got an unhealthy relationship with booze or anything, have you? No, I don't think so. Do you think that's because your dad put you off it? No, because I do drink, but I don't drink constantly. Yeah. Yeah, but I think if I had nothing, what would stop me? Hmm. You said that from the beginning. Yeah, no, you, no, I, I no, thought you were going to be riddled no. with anxiety coming around. I, I am. Thought, I, I was, thought we were going to have to just ask loads of questions, but you yeah. know, if anything, you just I don't shut you. the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. No, honestly, like, I am. This is how I deal with being anxious. I'm, like, overconfident. But that's how I am always. I think she put a bit too much pressure on herself as well, don't she? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't think the... Um, You're just being normal. Yeah, this, this, the, your opening statement of being, you know, this cold heart person with yeah. the front and resting bitch face and all this. Oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, well, that is, is that uh, what you thought? Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, we both do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> however, <laughs> however, I think, um, I think beneath all that, you, you're quite obviously not. You're the complete opposite. I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. You're a very good friend. I am. You are. I am. A very we went good for a dip friend. last night, didn't we? I was you a bit did. stressed. I, I rang you last you night, but you you were I had a meltdown yesterday. Yeah, so, he had a meltdown, yeah. so he's like, oh. what? I don't know. Well, someone ripped me off, but I don't want to put too much energy on that. It's, it's I've, not that. I've dealt with it. It's not a historical one, is it? From no, it's another one. <laughs> or a new one. Mm. I, nah, I dealt with it. I, I don't want to give it too much energy. It's not like you not giving that jacket you, back to that person. I said it's gone. I knew the jacket police were coming round. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. Ah, uh, you that thought was, that was oh, it? Oh, that's it. Cool. Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh, mate. Oh, I can put that to rest. Yeah, then, you can. can. Yeah. Thank fuck. No more, no more Scotland jacket. Yeah. However, yeah. you've replaced that whole thing with a uh, missing tooth. Yeah, I look like a fucking hillbilly. And now that's something I'll have to bring up every week. Yeah. Not I'm on another nice. podcast with some people, the Be Sober ladies, yeah. Oh, on yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Be Sober. And I've got a bloody. Yeah, <laughs> and that's about an hour before my dentist appointment, so I'll be on there looking like a hillbilly. But okay. then you'll be posting loads of stories of your new smile, like okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not one for selfies. No. What? <laughs> Sorry, what? Shall we move on? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I had a bit. I went to Alton Towers the day before yesterday. No, you went to Pleasure Hills. Yeah. 
So, Tate up no, you tell yeah, the yeah Pleasure the Hills, that's the one. And um, I had a really good day, and then the next day I got ripped off, but I've come to terms with it. That's, if someone does that, that's that's just them not keeping their what? side of the road like clear. Pleasure Hills? No, different situation. But because I had such a high that day, I think, and that, everything that went on that day, I had a really, I just had, a, I said to you yesterday, didn't I? I, I had like a, just a, like a wave of depression hit over me. I haven't yeah. felt that for a long, long time. I'm yeah. sorry, mate. I'm just kind of dealing with No, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was in the you thick selfish of bastard yeah. rescuing people and taking them to hospital. <laughs> yeah. But I run this over me like I do when I'm stressed. Every time, every time you're having a fucking It's twice, bit. twice. Right, I'm very good like, these days. Yeah, but we went for a dip and both of us come out of that water feeling great, didn't we? Yeah. I don't know if it was the weed the kids were smoking next <laughs> 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 like that. No. No. no, but no, it was, yeah. And the, 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 the water just takes away all your yeah. stress. No, She's really texting doesn't. now. <laughs> Are we boring you? <laughs> no, we really get bored. No, I'm just so... I'm texting during a live podcast. Yeah. You know this is going out to millions of people. Yeah, live yeah, now. We've got loads of viewers. <laughs> yeah, we have. We have, actually. Have you? I've never seen one. Have you? What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's heartbreaking. I bet you fucking listen so, to I'm this too one. too busy. <laughs> I will not listen to this. Watch, no. Why are you so busy? Because I've got I... two jobs. Mm, and a kid. <laughs> I work a lot. Okay. Oh, you don't go on about it. Oh my God, Sam says you all got double you shifts do- for the next six you- days. Are you doing a job that you love though? Yes and no. <laughs> oh God, don't start her off. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, it's hard it's being demanding, isn't it? It's very demanding. So, what was you nervous about? I don't like talking about stuff that much. Do you, I think it will help you though, talking about it. Well no, because I'll leave here and I'll just go, pretend it didn't happen. But that if you if you keep doing the same things over and over, you're only ever going to get the same results. Have you never thought about she's texting again? Sorry, I'm not. You texting the same boy. That is uh, Miss Amy Schwer. Oh, oh, Amy Schwer. Oh, we both know Amy, Amy, don't we? Exactly. Yeah. She'd have that. been a better guest. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Okay. She was like, she was the one thing that got me through everything. So. Oh, she's good. Shout out to Amy. Amy. I love Amy. Amy. She's so done that's the dip. Who I was texting. There's no joke then. <laughs> no, she's, she is a diamond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do love that girl. Yeah. Yeah, she is. She's great. Is she going to do the December dips? Are you going to do the December dips? Maybe. I'll yeah. tell you on the first. If oh. I show up on the first, yeah. then I'll come. The thing is, it's dark in the mornings. That's what I don't like. Yeah, it's great. No, it's not I'm like scared. you haven't done it before. No, I'm scared of waves, am I not? Yeah, you would hate it today. Waves. Oh, don't start, you know, Sam. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not like the earthquake. Yeah. There was a big wave well, on Felix's yeah. What's the Look, date? Let's be honest. What's the I date? We established that Sam actually made that up. Yeah. Fourth of August, there was a massive wave that hit Felix's Beach today, and it dragged people that were laying and set this in the woods. <laughs> yeah, not yet. There will be. The if you're listening to this and you were on the beach and got washed up like we did today, message. Message. <laughs> This is Jack and Zoe. Let them know. No, I'm not for sure. My number is. I saved people's <laughs> lives today. I was so, like a hero. It's not about me. Get, yeah, it's not about you. Get, getting back to you, Zoe. Thank you. With, um, <laughs> with what you went through. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the day. <laughs> with what you went through, mm-hmm. um, what advice would you give to someone who's maybe gone through the same thing? To be fair, I do talk to other people that have been through the same, and it's it's good that we can talk to each other and just sometimes go, it's fucking shit, in it? And they're like, yeah, because there's no words that can explain how you feel. Mm. So it's just to find people who you can talk with openly. That is That is the best advice. And to probably, I think because I was so young, I didn't even think oh maybe I should be feeling this way or it was literally I was thinking shit I've got to get back to work I need to do this I need to do that it's time you need to give yourself time but I never you didn't literally how how, how quick did you get back to work after your parents after died? my dad died I was given two days um compassionate leave oh maybe I should get myself signed off I just went back to work mm. and then when my mum died but I did go to the doctors and get signed off for I think like a couple of weeks. You've got these days, you have to do that. There's no support in place because um, last year, one of my friends who I worked with, she died. 
and I wasn't currently working with her, I found out in the morning was at work and I had a full patient list. So I'm like, and the next day I texted in and I was like, I'm not coming in because it fucked me up. Like yeah. I just needed to. Got to give yourself time yeah, to grieve. And I think I actually came to yours and helped you tidy this Remember, yeah, yeah, remember, yeah. Because I just needed to keep my mind busy. But the next day, oh, look at him on his phone now. <laughs> the next day, um, my boss Don't look at me like that, Jack. <laughs> my boss literally said to me, oh, you should have called in if you're sick. Like, I think it's so important to, to give yourself time to grieve and grieve properly. Um, that, is, that is the biggest thing. If I'd have given myself time... I'd have probably dealt with things better. But yeah. there is no time. No one gives you time. No. It's like, right, I don't know, as soon as you get a death certificate in your hand, do you you're think having to sort it, everything out. Do you think it's best sometimes as well to throw yourself back into work, maybe? No. Instead of sitting Not straight the away. No. Like, I literally had days. Yeah, no, that is, that is extreme. Yeah, days. And that's including, like, by the time I was, what, well, I was still 25, mm. I planned really good funerals. And I was proud of that. And I'm thinking, fucking hell, that's not something you should be good at and mm, know what to do or no. who to see or who to ring. And it's just, yeah, like, it's crazy. But I think, like I said, I actually said to Amy the other day, we were talking and she was like, me, that actually really upset me. As an adult, I don't know what it's like to have a parent. Yeah. I don't know what it's like to have any guidance or support as such, because they're the only people if you like think about your children mm. you will fully support them no matter what mm. I don't have that I have no one that would unconditionally support me mm. and yeah and that's shit I think both your parents would be very proud of who you are today I'm not very, I'm not often nice to you <laughs> no <laughs> but, like but, yes and no but I do and, and if and if I have ever been horrible to you um, I would like to Formally apologise now, Zoe, because you were you have been massive um, inspiration. Oh, don't! don't. <laughs> no, you have. You've been brilliant, and you've helped a lot of people out, not just me, mm. with your advice on the beach and everything. Especially at the beginning of Dare to Dip. You... Yeah, I was there from like day. Six. What day did you start? That's what I, was I think like ask six you. days after you started. And you you done solid like yeah. How how many months did you do? I'm going to say, like, a good few. Yeah. <laughs> you I, don't know. <laughs> I, I struggle with not, being... Not um, 12. Time. Not 12 uh, months, was it? No, free, well, we can't all be superheroes. Would you, you have even done 12? 12 months. Me. No, but would you have even done it if I hadn't have helped you for No, I'd exactly. probably die. <laughs> exactly. Like, you wouldn't have even, like, we've yeah. I've stood out here, what, 9, 10 o'clock at night and gone, no, we're going, just so you've done it in that day. Yep. There was a couple of times when I relapsed um, that Andy, Zoe, Rick Ward, my brother, so many people helped me. And um, there was one day I nearly threw it in, didn't I? Yeah, and that, I said and, to and him, and I just said, do I'm, it. I'm not doing it, I've not had enough. <laughs> you don't I do that one day, yeah. you fucked it. You horrible bastard. Yeah. <laughs> you selfish bastard. Yeah, well, that, that's what drinking drugs does to me, mate. It makes yeah. me a very selfish person. And, but luckily I had good people. I said that on a podcast recently. Like luckily I had good people around me at the time because who knows, if I didn't have good people around me, I might still be in the worse, situation yes, or worse. Reflecting on what you said when you, your parents had gone, mm. you, you thank for the fact that you had good people around you. Mm. 100%. And my sister's very, like, she, she will support me. Like, she's very level-headed. You're close to you and your sister, aren't you? Yeah, God, yeah. And she's got a little boy, isn't she? Yeah. And you're very little good safety. with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we are very close. So I have her, and I've got really good friends. Mm. Amy being, like, top tier. I have to say that, because I accidentally called someone else my best friend in front of her the other day. Yeah. Was it me? No, it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> so where am I in the pecking order? Amy, the other best oh, friend, and then me. Yeah, yeah you're, yeah, you're under Amy, there you go. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky man. We'll, we'll edit that bit out. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I'm getting under Amy, apparently. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I, it's all good. Yeah. Same. So what does the future hold, then? Future holds... I don't know. I don't really plan massively. My son is 16. He, I put everything into him. Like, he's going to go far. He's amazing. So, and I've always said, when he goes to university, that's when I'm going to look at what I really want to do. What are you going to do? What a good mum. No. 
Ja, ja, mycket man ja. Ja, nice. 100 percent What do you want to do? I don't know. Like, there's I've had a few different thoughts. Either I would love to just say see you later, Felix, so for a while and go traveling, or completely change my career and maybe try and train to do other stuff. I just should know. I've got world is my oyster because well, be if you nothing. if you went off and done a little bit of traveling, mm-hmm. you'd probably actually find yourself and find what you want to do. Yeah, I don't think I'd come back. Oh well, you can't do that then. <laughs> No, because Callum, like, he's he's going to go off, do amazing things, and I would never think, want him to be like, oh, have to go visit my mum. Do you find that you sad, know? though? I've, I've just no, noticed recently that uh, we, we said, we t- spoke about this last night, didn't we? I said I feel like I'm losing me, me girls, oh, yeah, they're getting like, older. Yeah. And, uh, no, do you know what, though, but you change with them, like, yeah. you go from wanting to, like, mother them and to want them to be these awesome, independent people, and he is, like... What yeah. that boy achieves is ridiculous, and yeah. I don't know where he actually gets it from. But you. like, no, no, like he's so smart. Oh, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> like he's so smart. <laughs> he's only got two minutes ago. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where he's got that from. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm yeah. Joking. So I fully support everything he wants to do, and if that's, I don't know, because he obviously wants to go to university and stuff, mm. and wherever he goes from there, awesome. And he was like, oh, I think I'm going to live in London. And I was like, oh, I'll come up and visit you. <laughs> no, and he's like, no, you won't. <laughs> Would you ever give the, um, what's it called? What? What's it called? Where you speak to someone on the sofa. <laughs> what, you went and you said it didn't work for you? Therapy. Therapy, therapy. thank you. I think Jesus, never... <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't think of the word therapy. <laughs> no, I need a lot. <laughs> but would you ever give um, therapy a try again? No. Well, not yeah. even with a different attitude towards it, open-minded more. No. Fair enough. Why, why not? No, I just don't think it works for me. I, I honestly don't think it would ever but work But that's for what me. I mean. If you change your, your attitude towards it and thought, this might actually work for me, and give it another go open-mindedly. No, because I don't see what they can do. I li- if, if someone can go, we could do this and make you feel this, this and this, so you deal with it this way. Yeah. But I honestly don't know what someone could do for me. Well, you're going to have to do the December dips. It's the only chance. The only choice. I think you've got um, a bit of an awakening coming to you, I think, down the line. Well, you sound like my um, astrology app. No, I'm not. What's that? I got that. I'm not. Play bad, don't you? I'm not. Well, I'm not not an astrologist. No, but no. What's an astrologist? Like star signs and stuff. Oh. I thought it was like what Ross was. I'm friends with the dinosaurs. What? That, please edit that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> no, people are stuffing. What is that? Tooth, that tooth is really suiting you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what? <laughs> no, but going out here from the range. I think, I think when you, you your son goes off to uni, mm-hmm. you find yourself with a lot more time. I think you'll you'll find your foot in, with something, yeah. and I think you'll. I don't know, I think it's probably a bit of a, a bit of a change and a bit of an awakening coming yeah. to your life. No, um, I like I can see I can see myself like I am happy, this is what I mean. I don't this is why when I say I don't want people to feel sorry for me, like I'm all I'm alright. What you go through obviously doesn't determine who you are at all. No. And in a way it made me very strong mm. which isn't a bad thing. You grow because, through what you go through, I always say. Yeah, and you do. You do, because no matter what I will always carry on mm. and pick yourself up because no one else will. I, and I ge- do generally think that we're all better at giving other people advice oh, and listening to it ourselves and I think you're a classic case. I literally tell myself every day, oh, you should do this and stop doing that and then by the time the evening comes, I'm nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm too tired. Mm. So, yeah. No, well, I'm glad you come on in the first series of Dead Talk. Wow. God. Yeah, that was savage. <laughs> that was really Zoe, bad. thank you so much for sharing the story. Um, it's been re- really, really nice to have you on. Um, thank you for being, <laughs> thank you for being really honest. I think you said at the start you were really nervous and you didn't no, want to talk, yeah, but actually 100%. you've been really open. And um, I think if anything, we couldn't shut you up. I, <laughs> I, I think, no one ever can. I think, I think there'll be people that have listened to this and that will really benefit them to be able to hear to go through something really tragic and to be able to come out the side and have a successful and happy life. Yeah, yeah and I'd 
what he said. I agree. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. Peace out. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs>